uh, this has gotten me to thinking there's the ancient philosophy, but philosophy's changed a lot in the last 2,000 years, and it's been one thing spilling over another. We've had modernism, Marxism, uh, logical positivism, existentialism, and now the, the hot thing is deconstructionism. And what I was wondering is the argumentation that Paul uses, is that effective against uh, these modern philosophies? Well, in the end, the, the, uh, Paul's call to bow at the feet of Jesus and no other ism is always, is always the answer. Um, what, but it, and the, but the, the church has always had to struggle with how to articulate its vision of truth and to, and to stay under the authority of Jesus and nobody else in, in any generation because we, we are as much shaped by the worldview that's around us as the people around us are. Mm -hmm. the, the only thing that, dis, that distinguishes us, and it's, it's like we can't help but to think in terms of the, the language and the categories of thought that are, mm -hmm. are around us. But what distinguishes us is by God's grace, and totally by his, God's grace, we have some altitude so that we can be in, in it, in it, but not of it. Mm -hmm. And we can speak meaningful words of hope to the problems that are often very well diagnosed by, by contemporary philosophies, but where they're there aren't answers because the answer comes from a redeemer that's that's outside any particular any particular philosophical system. But you know, f from the very beginning, um, Christians have had to try self-consciously to figure out how Christ relates to the philosophy of the day. From Augustine, who could not help but think in terms of Platonic philosophy, mm -hmm. Aquinas, who couldn't. Who, who really thought that in, in the recent discovery of Aristotle's thinking that you had a way of creating a, a grand Christian philosophy. And in many ways, I think his, it, Aquinas' thinking was, was, uh, was very helpful, mm -hmm. but there are also places where it looks like it's more a compromise than, than a redemption. Mm -hmm. We saw, especially in the 19th century, you, you know, mentioned Marxism, mm -hmm. but, but and, and that form of materialism, positivism, mm -hmm. but romanticism, right. and the, the, um, the Western church, I think, failed in large measure to find ways to stand above these and find redemptive words to say. Uh, mm -hmm. In the 20th century, I think the mainstream churches in the, in the U.S. and in Europe especially came under the sway of existentialism mm -hmm. and especially under the leadership of, um, of the systematician um, Paul Tillich mm -hmm. and the biblical scholar Rudolf Bultmann. There was just this self-conscious blending of Christianity and existentialism in which guess who won? <laughs> existentialism won and the church and churches have really been struggling. And what I think what God has done in the meantime has raised up um, an evangelical believing voice mm -hmm. who has listened, that has listened to the, the, the analysis of existentialism and the, its, its, its explanation of our cosmic aloneness, but have gone to the scriptures to say, but you know, there is, this helps us understand why we feel so alienated, mm -hmm. but you can't just accommodate Christianity and make its worldview fit this worldview and find hope. No, you have to go back to the word itself mm -hmm. and take seriously that in the beginning was the word mm -hmm. and the word was with God and the word was God and he himself came and took our flesh to bear our sins, to rise, to be the beginning of a new humanity and, and one, one in whom we can have a real hope for eternal life. And deconstructionism, um, I think, has helped us, has helped those of us who are pretty aware of the fallibility of our own motives, the, the fallibility of any authority that's mm -hmm. out there, and, um, and, and has made us pretty aware of how many competing stories there are around which to orient our lives. And th those voices give us 
the ability to go back and say, but you know, there is one story that is compelling and that we can commend as, as true. And we don't have to have all the answers. All we have to do is, is know that there is one who does know the answers. So I think it's a matter of, of having an ear to the, to the diagnosis and the analysis of the human situation that a, that a contemporary philosophy will often have keen insight into. And, but then we have to build bridges. We have to stay anchored. Uh, in scripture and tell its story, sing its song, and proclaim its truth um, as, as, as nobly, as winsomely, and, and as passionately as we can.